We are back with Nordic Semiconductor at Electronica 2024 in Munich, and we're talking about Thread. Now, the Thread protocol has a number of advantages for smart home. It is commonly kind of compared to Zigbee, but it has actually a lot more power than Zigbee, but that's a story for another day. One of the things about Thread that is really fantastic is that you can mesh devices together without actually having to have a hub necessarily, but if you want to talk to those things, say, through your smartphone, you do need a hub. There's just no way of doing it, or is there? Uh, Finn is here to show us a demo of how Thread could be used in the future to completely eliminate the need for any kind of a hub. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, uh, so what we're showing here is a Thread demo where you can actually have a one-to-one -one connection between Thread devices. Uh, so usually Thread is an IP-based mesh protocol where you need a Thread leader that like, manages the mesh network. Uh, you might know that in some of the newer smartphones, and here for an example we have an iPhone, there is actually a 802.15.4 radio, which is the same radio used for Thread. And uh, there's a use case now that we're showing here where you can have a one-to-one -one connection between a smartphone and, for example, window blinds here. But also a very good example that we've set up here in a development kit is between a smartphone and a door lock. So you could use a Thread protocol in a one-to-one -one connection between a phone and a door lock to unlock your home which is very nice because this way you don't need a border router to get started on having threat devices in your smart home. So that's the brief explanation. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, for, for anyone who has uh, incorporated any threat devices into their smart home, you're probably already excited. Um, but from a developer's perspective as well, this is something that is quite interesting because going forward, modern smartphones are going to have thread enabled radios in them. Um, and it's something that we always knew was coming. It just seemed to be something that was always right around the corner. But this is not just something that's been put together as a demo for the floor as a future possibility. If developers wanted to get started working this into their designs now, are there kind of reference designs and ways that they can actually get started with this? Yes. Uh, so before we were actually allowed to use an iPhone, which we now are, uh, we actually tried this on a, on a normal Android phone that we actually removed the Android, ran Linux, and used one of our 52840 dongles. And that is something that anyone can use. And then you can just add thread capability to a smartphone. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, we can help you with that. Uh, we're also in the process of actually making a blog about that specific thing. It's not out yet, uh, but if you keep up to uh, the Dev Academy blogs, uh, Dev Zone blogs, I can probably also send the link underneath your video once we've done it. It'll take some time, but we'll have a how to do this online. But uh, as, I, as many people who are watching this video will know, I do a weekly YouTube show as well. So when that does come to fruition and it is something that's available, we will definitely be coming back to it. Um, but from a more consumer perspective, presumably now that this is something that even before you had uh, access to the iPhone, you've been able to work on through your own designs. And yeah. um, this is something that is somewhat robust and it's something you would imagine would be showing up in consumer designs relatively soon, right? Uh, so the very quick answer is yes, because uh, if you know these window blinds, these are normal EVE motion window blinds. I think they've been on the market for like two or three years. So this is something that you can backwards compatible, like add to existing devices. So it's not something where uh, somebody actually needs a new device for it. Uh, it needs to be supported on the phone side, which is the difficult side. Uh, but it can, like the, the receiver side of this can be added to existing devices quite easily with a firmware update. And uh, yeah, so what we're gonna, probably going to see is something like you buy new window blinds, they come with a remote, for example, so you can use that for threat, but you could also use your phone. And then later on, if you actually go all in on the smart home, you get a threat border router, like an Alexa, uh, Apple HomePod Mini or Google Nest something. They're usually threat border routers. It's not like a super expensive thing. But then these same devices will be integrated into this self-healing, low-power, IP-based mesh network, which is, in my opinion, like by far the best way to like, do anything in the smart home. Absolutely. So whether you're someone who is developing for this or whether you're just an enthusiast who's working on your own smart home setup, things are uh, going to get just even more versatile and easy to work with. If you're interested in anything we've talked about in this video, there will, of course, be links under it in the YouTube video on our blog as well. And as I previously mentioned, when this is something that is put together and ready to actually start working with, we will be looping back to it on the Electromaker Show. Finn, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.